Welcome to Know Your Universe, where we go more in depth into individual topics and characters so you can understand their entire run in your universe better. Today we're going to be talking about Eobard Thorn, also known as Professor Zoom, also known as Reverse Flash. Now we did a video a while ago about all of the Reverse Flashes, but as Eobard has been declared the Reverse Flash of the CW Universe, and he just came back in the current Flash book, it's time for you to learn a little bit more about his feud with Barry Allen. Now before we begin, I want to warn you guys that Thawne is a time-traveling villain. Things happen all over Barry's timeline, so I'm going over the incidents themselves, but it may seem a little out of order. Because of this, I have no idea what's actually still in his history and what's been retconned out thanks to the New 52, so we're going to go over everything, but keep in mind, some of this might not be relevant anymore. Now we're going to begin with a little known fact about Professor Zoom. He's actually related to Barry Allen, or at least he was at one point in the timeline. So when Barry Allen was born, he was one of two twins. And the Thawne family, they were in the room next door. Now they lost their child during the delivery because the doctor basically messed up and killed the baby. Well, the doctor didn't want to get caught and sued for malpractice. So he took Barry Allen's twin brother and he gave it to the Thawnes. He then told the Allens that Barry's twin was a stillborn. And in normal soap opera fashion, Barry's twin brother eventually discovers the truth and he realizes that Barry had a better life. So he gains powers and becomes Cobalt Blue, whose purpose is to ruin Barry Allen's legacy. Now Cobalt Blue eventually passes on, but as he was a Thawne, it begins a very long history of battles between the Thawnes and the Allens, which eventually leads to Eobard Thawne. So let's explain the original origin of Eobard Thawne a little better. The story arc is called The Return of Barry Allen, and it spanned The Flash, Volume 2, number 74 to 79. You see, at this time, Barry Allen was already dead thanks to the events of Crisis on Infinite Earths, and Wally West had officially taken over. Thawne was a Barry Allen superfan from the 25th century who wanted to do anything he could to beat The Flash, so he replicated the experiment that gave Barry Allen his powers, and he went through surgery to look just like Barry Allen. He then uses the cosmic treadmill that had been kept in a museum to travel back in time and meet his hero, Barry Allen. Well, he messed up the cosmic treadmill because it had broken down after years of being in a museum. So he arrived years after Barry Allen's death, and because he used an unstable piece of equipment, he himself became unstable. After exploring the city, he had a full mental breakdown after learning that he was destined to become the Reverse Flash, and eventually died at the hands of the Flash. The strain on his mind forced him to begin believing that he was Barry Allen, and so he then went on a rampage throughout Central City for forgetting that he, as in Barry Allen, ever existed. Wally West and the rest of the Flash family proved that this wasn't Barry Allen and eventually sent him back to the future where his memories of the entire event were further blurred by the time travel situation and he could only remember going back in time and that the Flash beat him up sending him home. So this began his hatred for Barry Allen. Later, he took the name of the Professor, and he found the Flash's costume in a time capsule. The costume was still charged with the residual speed force, so Thawne found a way to tap into that residual speed force and further charge up the suit to give it some super speed. He then reversed the colors of the uniform, giving him his classic red on yellow appearance, and he took the name of Professor Zoom. Professor Zoom then ran around in his own time period committing crimes, but conveniently, the Flash decided to travel to the future to see who was going to open up the time capsule that contained his uniform, and he discovered that it was open and that its powers were being used for crime. So he ended up defeating Professor Zoom and he destroyed the costume that was granting him his powers. Now furious over his second defeat, Thawne decided to use his knowledge of the future to travel back in time and try to mess with the Flash. This time he tried to go back in time and replace Barry Allen, but after a few attempts, Iris made it very clear that she would never be with Thawne instead of Barry Allen. So Thawne vibrated his hand through her head, killing her. It took Barry Allen a long time to recover from the grief of this, and once he finally did, he found himself a second wife. Well, Thawne came back in time again on their wedding day, and he threatened to kill Barry's new wife. So after a battle, Barry ended up killing Professor Zoom to the shock and awe of Wally West. And then Barry traveled to the 30th century to live his new life with his new version of Iris West. Now, Eobard Thawne didn't stay dead. Eventually, his successor, who was going by the name Zoom, pulled Eobard out of the time stream just before Barry killed him. Well, Zoom and Professor Zoom tormented Wally West over and over until a version of Barry Allen came out of the time stream just before his own death, and he put Eobard back in his proper timeline, allowing him to die again, and for Wally to defeat his version of the Reverse Flash. 
But since this entire thing is already confusing and all about time travel, Professor Zoom appeared again, and this is when we learned just how important he was to Barry Allen, and all of the Flashes in general. You see, Professor Zoom appeared in the current timeline of the Flash due to his ability to freely travel through time, but he wasn't actually revived yet. That happens in the blackest night and the brightest day. But once he gets resurrected, he travels back in time and he recreates the chemical bath that made Barry Allen the Flash. He also then kills the Black Flash and creates what is known as the Negative Speed Force. All of these events bring Barry Allen back from what appears to be death, but he was actually trapped in the Speed Force ever since the events on Crisis on Infinite Earths. Okay, stay with me, because now it's gonna get confusing. So we discover that during Flash Rebirth, that Barry Allen is the one who creates himself. Thawne wants to ruin Barry's life and would love to kill him, but if he kills Barry, he then wipes himself from existence. Because of this, he makes it his mission to be the cause of the most horrible things that happen in Barry's life. He's the one who killed Barry Allen's mother along with every other horrible thing that ever happened to Barry. Thawne then tells Barry that he's going to travel back in time and kill Iris West before Barry can even meet her, removing her from the time stream. Barry and Wally then chase Professor Zoom traveling back in time after him, and eventually all three of them run so fast that they become the lightning bolt that grants Barry Allen his powers in his origin. So to make this easier for you, Barry Allen grants himself his powers by traveling through time to stop the reverse flash. When he gives himself his powers, he also created the Speed Force, which is where all speedsters get their powers from, except for Professor Zoom. Professor Zoom created the negative Speed Force, allowing him to travel through time more freely and remove himself from time itself. The entire Flash family eventually disconnects Thawne from the negative speed force and they imprison him in Iron Heights by holding him upside down and in one place. During the Blackest Night and Brightest Day storylines, Thawne remains in prison in Iron Heights until the end, while at the same time his current timeline corpse is running around. After all of this time travel hoopla, Professor Zoom gets free and he decides to rewrite his own history and his own origin. He uses the negative speed force to wipe his brother and his rival from existence, as well as killing his own parents. Thawne then tries to get a girl to fall in love with him by wiping out her fiance from existence, only to find that it didn't magically give her feelings for him. So he then rewrites his own history again by going back before he met her and traumatizing her. And this made her a mute who was institutionalized so he could never meet her. He is then the one who sends himself the Flash costume so that it can start all of the other events over in his life and everything can be back on track. Following these events, we have the Flashpoint event where Professor Zoom was there, but he wasn't the cause of it. Barry Allen decided to go back in time and prevent Zoom from killing his mother. But this also makes it so Barry Allen never becomes the Flash. Now this would have wiped Professor Zoom out of existence as well, but he was traveling through time at the moment that Barry Allen altered the time, so it created a living paradox out of the whole Professor Zoom situation. Eventually, Professor Zoom is killed by Thomas Wayne Batman, and Barry fixes the timeline again, creating the New 52. And now, as of issue 40 in the New 52, Thawne has returned in his normal yellow outfit, so it's going to be very interesting to see what he does next. And that is a very confusing rundown of the history of Eobard Thorne. Now for the television show, he's being played by Tom Cavanaugh, and it would appear that he went back in time to mess with Barry Allen like he always does. But all it ended up doing was creating some sort of time paradox where he's trapped in the modern day. And since we're currently going through that season where all this happens, we're gonna have to see how it ends. But I am enjoying what they're doing at the Reverse Flash so far. Now for his powers, he can move at superhuman speeds and basically do everything that Barry Allen can do. But he also has the negative speed force, which grants him the ability to create after images of himself, travel through and alter time, and even erase people from existence without having massive consequences on the timeline, like when the Flash does it. He can also alter time, change his own age, and steal memories from other people. And that's everything I have on Professor Zoom. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you were confused, give this video a like. If you weren't confused, give this video a like. You know what, just give this video a like if you enjoyed it. You can also follow us on Twitter, at Comicstorian, and on our subreddit, which is r slash Comicstorian. I'll see you guys next time, right here.